Hi, my name is Akshya and today I'm going to show you a quick overview of MDM's uh, IDD, also called as Informatica Data Director, Entity 360 or E360 and Cusma 360 or C360 as it's commonly called. So today uh, I'm going to show you a quick demo and also explain a few things on the IDD application screen on the UI. And then the same way I'm going to show you about E360, C360 application login and UI, and maybe talk about a few differences between these three and their underlying concepts. From Informatica MDM version 10 onwards, the IDD was revamped to a business entity style of data structure from the earlier existing subject area structure. In subject area, the data is organized around subject areas and a collection of subject areas form what is called a subject area group. An example would be party. And here the data is organized in a three level tree structure. But whereas in a business entity data structure, the data is organized around business entities, but the difference is there's unlimited depth. So a business entity is based upon a root node. So for example, a business entity with a person root node is considered to be a person business entity. Let's look at the differences between the subject areas and business entities. So the main difference is like in the API that is used. So we all commonly would have come across the word services integration of framework or SIP. So that's what the subject area is used, whereas business entity uses a REST kind of call, which is called business entity services. The key components in subject areas are the subject area itself, like say party and uh, etc. Uh, the lookup, cleanse function, there's data security or data masking and task administration. Uh, in business entity 2, um, you also have task administration, but it's called task and triggers. And then there is a concept called reference entity, transformations and filters. Uh, filters are equivalent to the data security in business entities. Uh, so the modeling is, this is only used within the IDD app. Uh, so subject areas are more like a logical layer on top of the underlying base object that exists in the MDM Hub console. Whereas business entities allow you to create a model that can be used outside this IDD as a RESTful API, hence we use business entity services call. The workflow uh, in subject areas are triggered manually, but only through subject area actions. Whereas the workflows can be triggered through change of master data through either the E360 or directly through services using active or using business entities. Uh, in customization, there is not much that we can do, but there is something about IDD user exit that you can have. But um, on the business entity side, uh, there is much more control by use of something called external calls uh, in business entities. So coming to the data structures, in subject area structure, the data is organized around subject areas and aggregated into subject area groups, whereas business entity is the data is organized around business entities. So how do you configure? What tool do you use to configure each of them? In subject areas, we use something called the IDD config manager, and in business entities, you use something called the provisioning tool. Both of them have UI, separate UIs, and I'm gonna, I'll be showing a quick demo of that as well in this video. Uh, so coming to search, we have a query search available uh, in subject areas and whereas in business entities, we also have query search and also something called the smart search that is used along with elastic search setup. And then um, both have import export capabilities uh, as well in 10.4, there is bulk import uh, functionality introduced. Coming to the user interface, um, here, as I said, it's a tree level structure, right? And that do it's particularly limited to level three, which is parent, child, and grandchild. But here, business entities, since they have unlimited depth, they have more flexible layout options. So coming to the task administration, subject areas used a work, Cyperian workflow engine, whereas uh, business entities use B active was workflow engine. Cyperian is kind of deprecated now. And the difference again in timeline was support and subject area, but not in business. It is not going to be supporting business entities. And uh, there is a feature where you could like attach documents in business entities, but it is not so the case in subject areas. 
going forward uh, informatica plans or has actually planned to deprecate subject areas so uh, we are moving towards more business entities and more modern approach uh, for MDM in future. And so this is the area where we are high, heavily invested and in. we're planning on bringing new enhancements and developing new features in future. So this is what uh, UI would look like just uh, to show you a snapshot of it. So if you want to literally convert from subject area to business entities due to the migration and deprecation of subject areas, right? Uh, you could uh, see there is some similarity, right? So in example, on the highlighted side on the left, you have person, organization, products, product group. So these are subject areas and they collectively form a subject area group. And so you have an exact uh, transformation and these are what are called business entities on the provisioning tool. So a subject area is now called a business entity, a lookup is called a reference entity, a cleanse is called a transformation, a task administration is called task and trigger, relationships are still called relationships and then there are other specific properties like update, edit, uh, set as required data security and data masking that are kept as is. So let me just quickly show you a demo. So to log into IDV config tool, you would go to BDV slash config. Okay, and then you would enter your credentials. And once you log in, uh, I already have an IDD application called MDM sample. This has been imported from the resource kit samples. Uh, where you could find this. This is in, um, or this is actually bounded to the MDM sample that comes with uh, MDM installation or the binaries. So I've used that. And um, if you want, you could uh, definitely import your own IDD application. There are several options here where you could import the XML alone or a zip or import anything existing to the existing IDD application. So there are options here to like add one whole new IDD application itself. You could use this feature and edit would allow me to edit this existing application because this is selected and this is the only one I have. Uh, I could delete it or I can take an export of this whole application. So this is needed or useful when you want to upgrade or you want to keep a backup. So then you would do an export. Validate would just validate the application for any errors. So here I can see the deployment state. It says deployed and validation result is uh, there is an error, but this is uh, can be ignored. Uh, as long as the status is a green check mark and it says deployed, you are good. So you can also redeploy this application by clicking this. Uh, let me just edit this and show you. So here is the name of the application and I could always change the display name. So it doesn't have to be this. I could say something like MDM sample IDD application. So this is editable. I can do that, right? And just a quick description of that. And um, the most important thing is what ORS this is bound to. So I, as I said, this application works well with MDM sample uh, that comes out of the box. So this is my ORS database name. So the bind would be here. So it gives you a drop down of all the ORSs available and you could choose. So this is my ORS name and I'm showing it on a 10.3 hotfix one version. Um, and this is your HM or hierarchy manager configuration. You could go with the default and the source system. So it's, you could choose whatever source system as a default. Uh, so here, right, subject area groups. So each of this customer, product, household, account are subject area groups. And within this subject area, I have a subject area called the person and an organization. So when you click on edit, how do I classify this as a person or an organization? It is based on the subtype value that comes from the party table where it's either a person or an organization. So the subtype column is the party type, which is a column in the party table. And based on that, you can classify this subject area as either a person or an organization. So these are the columns um, that I want to showcase um, for this, right? And then there's also organization. So if you see organization, then it shows a party type as 
organization. So that's the differentiation. Um, so that's about it. If you come back to the home, uh, you can see there's a URL over here. And if you click on this, this will take me to the E360 login page directly. Or uh, another way or simple way to go to this page is you just click BDD slash and it will also redirect to the same page. So that's another shortcut for you guys. So once you log into E360, you will be shown uh, different uh, applications that I have. So this is coming from the IDD subject area that we recently saw. And these two are coming from the provisioning tool to indicate that these two are business entity based. So either uh, let me just uh, go with the provisioning tool based or business entity now to show you the difference. Uh, so if you'll see, you'll have the same layout, uh, uh, the new home query search and task manager are the various uh, features that you will see, right? So if you want to click or if you want to create a new person or an organization, uh, record you could do that so here you would enter the details like uh, test test name some number one two three four and click save uh, so basically this pop-up comes when you have a task or a workflow triggered so here if you want you could like uh, browse and attach any file as a proof so that the next person who approves it or reviews your task will be able to verify your information say for example you've entered some price as $23 and you want to attach some receipt or a bill to say that uh, this is in fact 23 and it's correct. So you could attach that bill and then your approver or the task approver can review and check and then verify or update the approve the task. So you could add your comments here as well. Say uh, test comment, um, please approve or please uh, review and approve right and you click save you will get a success complete a green box and in all tasks you will see that there has been a new um, review task created and it has been unclaimed yet right so that's the whole process of creating and submitting a new record so this is the data steward ui where uh, it'll be useful to create or update anything. So now if you want to search, right? So you could go to the queries and you could actually search for the, uh, uh, you know, the record that we just created. So you could just say, I think the dance number is one, two, three, four. So you could just do that and it gives you the record we just created. But it'll be still in a pending state because there was a task created and that's this display over here. So this is a good way uh, to say that the, this um, record is still pending, uh, approved by your manager or the next person in the task workflow engine. And it, and it also shows that you do not have permissions to edit this record because this is still pending and needs approval, right? So once the appro approval goes through, you can come back and click edit. So um, for example, if you don't, if you have another record which is editable, you could just search it over here, and it gives you the edit option. So you can come here, click edit, make some changes, and then say I just made it incorporated, right? And then I say save. Again, it creates a task for you, and just say edited to uh, incorporated, right? And then this again creates a new task. So that's what this does. So if you want to view, uh, if you want to view the task, you can either go to the home page, like I showed you, where you have all the tasks, or you could either go to the task manager. So since this is not a, your task yet, right, because you just created it, but it's not something you claimed, it would be in the all tasks section. So this is one of the records we just edited, right? So if you have permissions, you will get the claim option. If not, uh, the person who has, uh, you know, permissions, they can log in and they can see the claim option to claim it. So these are the tasks and some, I have some like, um, that are still open, uh, and yet to be claimed, but they have reached a due date. So it shows in red. Um, and then this search option is for, uh, Elasticsearch. So if you have Elasticsearch set up and, um, uh, you want to search by a particular name, 
you could just uh, do that over here. I may not have elastic set up. Oh, I do? No, I don't. Okay, so that those results will show up over here. So this is your simple elast uh, E360 layer. And similarly, uh, if you want to check out C360, that's a different layer. Don't get confused with E360 and C360. Uh, in 10.4, the URL has been changed to MDM apps. Uh, another quick, uh, easy way to come to e C360 would be just type BDD like we did for E360 and change this E to C. So it'll redirect to MDM apps or the actual um, C360 URL. So this is what you need to be using if you want to, if you have a C360 application, right? So we have, say, Customer 360. Uh, the difference between C360 UI and E360 UI will be in, you can note, you can note it by either the URL or by what's shown here. So you, you wouldn't see anything called My Jobs or File Import or in uh, E360. So uh, C360 has the File Import feature, which E360 doesn't. Um, what this allows you to do is like uh, basically do a bulk import of records. So you could have like a CSV or Excel file, search for the file, uh, upload it, and it allows you to import or like say thousand records or hundred lines of records at a time. Uh, when you click on preview and import, instead of going to the new page and clicking and creating thousand records at a time. So you could do it on Excel and upload the same. So uh, and uh, apart from that, you another difference you notice is in C360, you have something called a draft task and some charts that you wouldn't see in an E360. Uh, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.